Estimated 2,000 people took part in this Saturday's March for Justice through downtown Nashville. Metro police say they made one arrest. Benjamin Dotson is accused of flying his drone too low over the crowd on Broadway, but he disputes that. He does dispute that, and he is on with us right now. Welcome to the show, Benjamin Dotson. What's going on, guys? Hey, how you doing? Uh, thanks for taking I'm time. Right. Now, you are the gentleman out of all the people in that were downtown Nashville doing all kinds of stuff. You were arrested for flying your drone. For trespassing, yes. Trespassing. Okay, this is one of the things that aggravates me to no end is when local law enforcement take it upon themselves to police our airspace because it's, they can't do that. <laughs> so give us a little bit of, of what happened. Take us through what happened. Well, uh, I actually operate a business on Broadway. Um, so obviously with recent events, a uh, week prior, uh, there was a peaceful protest that turned not so peaceful later on in the evening and you know, all of Broadway, including the building directly linked to us was damaged. Luckily we were unscathed. Um, they even set it on fire. Um, so, you know, I want to get some aerial footage of a history in the making. It's happening across the entire nation and B just to kind of get an idea of what direction they're moving in. Uh, just make sure there's no violence going on. Uh, the entire time during the first one, I kept on Facebook Live making sure what was happening. Once I saw that they were tearing up the courthouse, I sh had to shut down operations, had to get everybody out of there for everybody's safety, immediately closed the doors, turned off the lights, put everybody upstairs until we could get everybody out of the building. And so, you know, that, that, that it really kind of stings that that even happened in the first place. So everybody's got a um, their own sense of edge. Right. So I was in the same boat. We've uh, we've lost three days of businesses or three days of business due to uh, protests just for the precaution of safety. Um, so I uh, ultimately launched, uh, informed an officer that I would be flying, showed him where the UAV was, just so that he knew that if there was a call on it, that he could report that there wasn't a threat, that he had the the pilot in sight. Mm -hmm. And I uh, made my way over a couple buildings. I was approximately 97 feet to, I think the telemetry said at one point I hit exactly 100, no over, I never made it over 100 feet. But it was over buildings the entire time, never got over people. I did cross a couple of roadways, um, but it's it's been so slow down there due to COVID as well. Right, when there's, there's no cars, when, when there's no vehicles, you can cross the street. Not a lot of people know that. Yep. But um, so shortly after I uh, got a couple of photos, I had another officer approach me and say, "You do realize what you're doing is illegal, or you, you do realize flying over crowds is illegal." And I said, "Yes." He's like, "So you admit that what you're doing is illegal?" And I, I explained to him, "No, I'm not over a crowd. I'm over a building." And I tried to even show him the video. Was it having? And he said, "Bring it home." And that was the only time that I actually crossed over any pedestrians. Was when he said, "Bring it home." I just pulled the control back directly to my location. And keep in mind, I had visual line of sight the entire time until he came up to me. Right. Um, and so he distracted me from piloting my aircraft. And as soon as I got it back, I landed it, and he said, "You're under arrest." Uh, other officers got involved, and. The sergeant even said, you know, this should just be a stateside citation and you'll be on your way. And the next thing I know that they were transporting me to an undercover uh, van where they said it's a code two, you're going to jail. How long did you so, spend? How long did you spend in jail? Roughly three hours. OK. And so you have a court date on June 22nd. Mm -hmm. And do you, uh, now I, I have a few questions. But one, are you are you part 107 uh, certified? Or you're I'm not. You're so you're a hobbyist. hobbyist. Okay. Well, the same rules apply about flying over people. Um, how do you think it's all going to pan out? You you don't have a lawyer, is that right? I've literally been on the phone all day, jumping around lawyers to see what their knowledge is in the whole situation. I've gotten a wide variety of prices, and it just it's uh, the more and more that they're hearing about it, and they say, "Well, we saw you on the news, and the price jumps up." <laughs> Oh, it jumps um, up. You'd think they would do it pro bono for the exposure. That's well, it would be nice, but that's crazy. Well, maybe you know, it's it is a it, they haven't had much work lately since nobody's been going to court. 
Yeah, I guess so. I'm really sorry that that happened to you, but so you're absolutely sure that with your telemetry, and you can get that from the the Go app to mm -hmm. show where you were flying. You're you're absolutely certain that you weren't flying. Or you were over buildings. Yeah, I've, I've gone over it multiple times, and I've I just made sure that I was not flying over crowds. Again, the one time that I was flying over people is when I was directed to come and land. So he basically inter interfered with my operation of an area vehicle. And, um, and did you get yeah, your did you get yeah. your drone back? Yeah, they uh, they separated my personal belongings, wallets, uh, phone, everything else away from the drone. And they, it took a couple of days to get it back, but they did release it back to me. Okay, and I just want to make sure, Jeff, are you still alive? Yeah. Okay, okay, no, he's still, still alive. I just want to make sure he wasn't moving or anything. <laughs> I didn't know if we lost secretary. him. Okay, all right. So uh, I I have I have very strong feelings about local authorities trying to usurp the FAA it, it, with this kind of stuff. You know those little municipalities that you see all over with the no droning sign, which is bull, uh, because they, they, can't, they can't do that. They can try, yeah. and they can, they can make your, your week really bad like they've done with you, but ultimately I, I hope that, uh, you know, again, it's up in the air, but if, if in fact you can prove that you were correct, with your flying, I, I hope that they you can recoup the costs of all this. Well, and that's what we're looking at possibly doing is um, maybe even taking it a little bit further to try to set some precedence on this because there is so much gray area and blurred lines when it comes to the definitions of airspace and local authorities that, I mean, it needs to be set in stone what we can do, what we cannot do, what the police can do, what the police cannot do. It's amazing how many people with badges... Uh, are not educated in this area, seeing as how popular drones are. Certainly everybody watching this knows the rules and have had run-ins with authorities with their, their flights. Uh, I have, and uh, they're not entirely open to being educated. <laughs> no, yeah, I've, I've had one other instance, and that was uh, flying at Opry Mills Mall, and a, a metro came up and said, you know you can't be flying over people. I was like, you know what? Um, yes, sir, sure. I'll, and I just went about my happy way. I wasn't. I mean, I that's just got what, off work. <laughs> you, you, if you get confrontational with them, even if you're in the right, that's bad news for you. You know, it just depends on the person. Some some authorities, I I talk to them. Hey, that's really neat. Tell me more. Uh, you obviously know more than I do, and I show my license and everything, and they're like, oh, that's and cool. I believe, I believe that was a little bit of the case because I did explain to them. You know, I'm not beyond the 400 foot mark i'm not over a crowd and i was i was strong in that and he was like well bring it back okay and so yeah he, uh, he, he wasn't too uh he wasn't too friendly from the get-go from the initial contact well i got a question so the the interaction that you had with him do you feel that part of it was probably just the stress of what was going on in the environment that helped contribute to that oh absolutely 100 percent. I, I across the board i mean i get from their point of view safety is paramount and it is. And when I'm flying, safety is paramount. It it's, goes hand in hand on both sides. Um, you know, they're across the world in very, very, very small instances. People have weaponized drones. And, you know, that's that's the only thing that they grasp onto. They don't think about the hobbyist side of it. They just look as a threat. Um, well, and they didn't have any TFRs up or anything like that. There was nothing in place to, not to identify all. that this was restricted airspace. And when you went and looked at the apps and stuff, there was nothing that was indicating to you that you could not fly in that area. You're not near an airport, a helipad, anything like that. Uh, there, There is a helipad with Vanderbilt being down the road. Um, with that, you know, it, it's more of a courtesy to let them know that I'll be flying. It's not required. Uh, B&A is roughly about 2,100 feet, the airspace for B&A. And I had plenty. I would have to go over the river. I'd have to lose complete DLS on that to even get it near there. Okay. Ashley, your thoughts? Um, but no, it makes, not at all. It just makes me really nervous because I also, like, if I were to be confronted, I mean, in my most recent drone video, there was a cop that saw me flying, and I got out of there before I was even confronted because I don't handle confrontation well. So I probably would have cried if I was in your situation. Somebody telling me to bring the drone back home, I probably would have started bawling. Have you considered me that? in jail? <laughs> Have you considered that, uh, Benjamin? Have you considered crying next well, time? 
maybe defecation on myself. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, here, here's your drone, sir. Yeah, you go, you go about your way. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, man. In in all seriousness, uh, I I wish you the best of luck with with uh, on on June twenty second. Uh, please keep in touch. I'm gonna come to Nashville and meet up with you and and uh, do a follow up on this at some point, and we'll we'll fly oh, together. Absolutely, yeah. There's a there's been an incredible outreach from the uh, drone community. Uh, I did not know it was this tight. <laughs> I've got people from all over the country contacting me, and it's uh, it's uh, it's unbelievable, honestly. It's it really a, is. Uh, people are people are donating all tells. They're uh, uh, auctioning them off. I got people sending money with the GoFundMe. I mean, it's just they're just they're backing me up, and I'm I'm there to back them up as well. That's great. Do you have a GoFundMe uh, page? I do. You do? Okay, I'll I'll link I that uh, after the stream's over. I'll put a link in if anybody wants to help you out with your legal fees but uh hey thanks for taking the time i know you got a toddler running around the yard there you got to catch up with so Where? we'll we'll What's let up? you go <laughs> best of luck to you and uh, i hope this doesn't discourage you from flying in the future because actually nashville airspace unlike a lot of cities is pretty much wide open uh as far as mm -hmm. being able to fly there because the airport's so far away but uh thanks for being on with us thank you for having me thank all you very much all right we'll see you bud all right. This video lovingly sponsored by RemotePilot101.com. If you are serious about making money with your drone, whether it be photography or FPV, well, then you're going to need from the FAA a 14 CFR Part 107 certification. And the best place to study for that certification is RemotePilot101.com. Jason Shepard is a pilot and author of eight best-selling aviation flight training books. And yes, taking tests suck, especially government tests. But Jason breaks it down into 10 easy lessons into little digestible pieces that even someone like me can learn from. And if I can do it, you can do it, by golly. Each lesson is streamlined. There's no fluff. Everything you need to know for the test and nothing more. Plus, it's regularly updated, so if something new comes out, a new regulation, or the FAA just has a mood swing, Jason will let you know about it. As more and more drones are integrated into the United States airspace, the FAA will be coming out with more and more regulation, including things like remote ID and all the other crazy things you've been hearing about. So protect yourself, get the knowledge, become a Part 107 certified drone operator. There's never been a better time to get certified. So get the smarts you need to pass that test at remotepilot101.com. Use Heron 18 to get 30% off. That knocks the price down to 104 bucks. Look at that, boom, magic time. 22,000 tests passed and counting. You wouldn't drive without a driver's license. Don't fly without a UAS license. RemotePilot101.com Hey Ken, my hair is more beautiful than yours. Bo and bye.